So we've released a few videos on Django component packages in the past, including videos on Django Cotton, Django Components and Slippers. And in this video we're going to look at another one, and it's one that builds on top of Django Cotton. And that's the Django ShadCN package. This is an unofficial port of ShadCN for Django applications. And we're going to explore in this video how we can use Django ShadCN to build component-driven Django applications that are very customizable but also have good out-of-the-box defaults. Now before we dive in, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page which we've got a link to just below the video. And thank you very much to everyone that has supported Bug Bites via the coffee page. And if you want to support the channel, you can also become a member as well on YouTube. Thanks again to all the new members. And before we start the video, I want to mention this poll that I've added on YouTube. So basically in the previous post, what I did was I asked for some suggestions for future content and we got two posts that had equal numbers of upvotes. And the one I'm going to go with is a video on the Django tenant package. So that's going to come out in October at some point. The other post had three suggestions and what I've done is I've added a poll here and whatever one of these you want to see the most, you can vote for that option and I'll release a video in October or November on that topic. So let's now get started with Django ShadCN. So there is a package here, but before we look at that, let's have a look at ShadCN itself. This is a design system based around components, and originally that was developed for React applications. And the idea is you get some beautifully designed components, but you can extend them and customize those components and build up a component library based on the components that you add to your project. And that is all open source, and if we go to the documentation, you can see on the left hand side we get a lot of options but there is a section for components so for example you can very easily build these types of accordions that's one component we have components for alerts buttons calendars and so on lots of components are available this is the default shadcn package for react applications and it's also now available for vue.js and other front-end frameworks we're going to look at the django port of this package and as I said earlier, it's unofficial, so it's not tied to the main ShadCN package in any way. But if we scroll down here, we're going to go to the README section. And we can see here that components are built with Tailwind and Alpine.js, and they're also HTMX compatible. So that makes them highly customizable and interactive, and we'll see examples very soon of that. And there's also a CLI tool that we're going to use as well. And you can have a look at the features here. What we're going to do is go to the installation section. And you can see we can run a command with UVX or with PipX. So I'm going to copy this UVX command and I have a Django project open in VS Code. Let's bring up the terminal here and we're going to paste that in. Now when we execute this command, you can see it's installing some packages here. And after that completes, we get the CLI page for the ShadCN Django CLI command. And we have some subcommands here to initialize a project, to add a new component and also to list all of the available components. We're going to look at these later in the video. But to get started, we need to install Django Cotton into the project. So we're going to go to the installation instructions for Django Cotton. And we can start by installing that inside our virtual environment. So I'm going to paste in the pip install command. So we've got a pip install command here. We're going to install Django Cotton. And you can also use UV if you want to install with UV. And once we've done that, we can add Django Cotton to our installed apps. So let's go down to installed apps here and paste that in. Now, if you want to know more about Django Cotton, we did a couple of videos in the past and I'll leave links to those in the comments. Now the next step is to initialize ShadCN Django inside our Django project. So let's copy this UVX command and let's go back to the terminal and we're gonna run this init command here to initialize the project. Now what this does is it creates an input.css file and it also creates a templates slash cotton directory at the root of the project. And it adds the required Tailwind CSS configuration for ShadCN components. So let's have a look at the file system that we have here. If we look at the left hand side, you can see we now have this input.css file. And this is our Tailwind configuration file and it defines some colors here, for example, primary and secondary colors. And you can change this if you want. And we also now have a templates slash cotton directory. And when we add a component, the component code from ShadCN Django is going to be placed inside this directory. So we're going to see how to actually add a component very soon. What we're going to do now is set up Tailwind CSS. And we can use npm or yarn to actually install Tailwind into our environment. So let's copy this npm install command. And we can go back to VS Code and paste that npm install command into the terminal. And that's going to install Tailwind CSS and also Tailwind Animate CSS. So after that completes, we now have a package.json file. And we also have a node modules folder that contains Tailwind. Now the next step from the documentation to get this up and running is to add a reference to 
a static file, and that's the CSS slash output.css. So let's copy this link here, and we're going to go to the base template of this project. So let me close all of this. And inside the core application, we have a templates directory, and we have a base template that I've created. And what we have inside this base template is a reference to Alpine.js, which is required by Shad CN Django. And we're also going to paste in this reference to a static file here, the output.css. In order to do that, we also need to load Django's static template tag. We can do that at the top with load static. Now at the moment, this output.css file does not exist, so we need to create that. And what we're going to do is use the Tailwind CLI in order to create that. And we're going to place this into a static directory. So we have this static slash CSS directory. That's where we want to take the output CSS file and place that into that directory. So how do we do that? We can go back to the documentation. And this is essentially the last setup step. We have an npx command and we're using the Tailwind CSS CLI and we take that generated input.css, that's the input to the command, and we're taking that and generating an output.css file. And output.css is going to contain all of the Tailwind classes that we're actually using. So it's basically bundling that together and creating the output file. So we can run this command and that is going to generate that file here inside this directory. Before it does so, we do need to install the Tailwind CLI. After that command completes, you can see we now have the output file and we're watching for any further changes inside our project and it's going to regenerate that output every time we get a new change. So that's important. We now have the reference to CSS slash output dot CSS. In order for this to work with a static directory at the root of the project, you need to have a setting in your Django settings.py and that's the static files directory setting. So point that to the static directory that we have at the root of the project and that way it's going to be able to find this particular file here inside that directory. So with the setup out of the way, we can now actually add a component to our project. Before we do so, let's run this uvx command. So what I'm going to do is go to the terminal here and we can run uvx shad cn django list and that lists out all of the available components in this package. So you can see all of these here, accordions, alerts, buttons, and so on. So that's the list command. If we want to actually add a component, we can use the add command. And we're going to start simple here and let's just add a button to this project. So when it adds the component, what's going to actually happen at that templates slash cotton directory, it's going to create a new directory called button and it's going to place the component code index.html into that directory. And we can open index.html to inspect the code that has been generated for this button component. And you can see the Django Cotton syntax here for variables. So this sets some default values for particular variables like variant and size in this case. So buttons can have different variants and you can actually add and remove variants as you desire. And we can also change the sizes of buttons. It's very easy to customize these components that are generated by Shad CN Django. And we're going to look at that later on and you can see all of the Tailwind classes that are added by default. And then we have some conditional logic here for the variant, for example, and also the size below. So if the variant that we pass into this component is default, it defines some background colors and so on. If it's destructive, it has some different background colors. We're going to look at that in a second. And the same for the size below. If it's default, we use these particular classes from Tailwind. And if we use the large class, for example, we increase the sizes. So we now have a button and it's contained in this index.html. How do we actually use that inside our application? So what I'm going to do is go to the index.html file in this project where we have an extremely simple HTML file that just contains a header one tag. And we're going to bring back the terminal here. And what I'm going to do is start the Django server with python manage.py run server. And I'm actually going to add a new terminal at the bottom. And inside this second terminal, we're going to run the Tailwind CLI to watch for any changes in our project and generate the output.css. We saw that command a second ago. That's what we're going to add here. Now, once we've done that, we can actually add a reference to the component. So I'm going to create a div here and let's give it a class of margin y2 from Tailwind. And that's going to separate it from the content above and below with some margin. And we can now use our button component. So it has the name of button. And if you want to reference a Django Cotton component, you can use the C dash button in this case. And that will refer to that button component. And we can pass in a variant. For example, we had a variant type of default. So let's do that just now and we'll close off the button component here. And I'm going to copy that to the line below. And indeed, I'll copy it one more time. And let's define another variant here with the type of destructive. 
and I'm also going to give this one a size of large and we'll give it the text of destroy me. And if we want to add one more button we can give it another variant so let's go back to the button component and we have a variant called link here. Let's refer to that inside the C button and we can use another size here for example extra small. So I'm going to go back here and we'll pass size equal to XS. So we've now got three buttons inside this component. Let's have a look at the page. And you can see what we have here out of the box with Django Shad CN. We have the default button. We also have a larger button here with the destructive red color. And finally, we have a link button as well. Now what we can do is we can actually edit and change up these components to suit the styles that we actually want in our web application. So let's go back to the button component and we can add and remove any number of classes that we want to this component and customize it. So for example, if I wanted all buttons to have cursor pointer, we can add that class from Tailwind and we're going to see that when we save this and go back and refresh this page, this time we now have the cursor pointer. So it's very easy to change these styles if we want. And we can even do things like add additional variants. So let's go back to the button just now and we're going to scroll down here and this is where we define the options for each variant. Now I'm going to define a new variant and let's call this one Panic. And I'm going to add some Tailwind CSS classes to that. The classes themselves don't really matter. It's going to give it some color and also some animations. But if we now save this and go back to the page, let's refresh this page. Of course, nothing happens because we're not using that variant at the moment. So if we go back here to the link button, let's change that to a panic variant and I'm going to remove the size. When we save that and go back to the page, you can see this panic button here. It's got that animation where it's pulsing. So that's how easy it is to actually add your own styles and your own variants to the button. And these concepts apply not only to the button, but also to all of the other different component classes from Django Shad CN. And one final thing just to show here is that we can also pass properties like disabled. So for the destroy me button, we can add disabled to that. And if we go back to the application, you can see it is now disabled. So we get all of this nice styling out of the box, but more importantly, we can customize these components. And even though a button is very simple, this is even more effective for more complex components. So that is super useful. And what you can do with this Django Shad CN package is you can start building up your own library of user interface components with consistent styling. And you can easily extend those components, but you have these very good and sensible defaults out of the box from which you can build upon. Now I want to very briefly look at another component. So let's just select this one here, the select component. And this gives you a drop down that you can display a list of options in. Now in order to add the select component, we can copy this UVX command. Let's go back to the terminal here and paste that in. And if we go back to the file system, we can look inside that templates directory here. And we'll, we will see in a second that it's going to add a new directory for the select. And you can see that here, but this time it's not just a single HTML output. We actually get five different files here. Now index.html is the entry point here. But if we go back to the documentation, we get a usage example. So at the top level, we have the select component itself, but we also have a content component and then the individual items that we want to display inside the dropdown. So what we can do is just copy this for now and we're going to amend this and add some data from our Django view in a second. Let's copy this and go back to index.html and just underneath the buttons that we have, I'm going to add this select component and then we can save that and we're going to restart at the bottom our NPX Tailwind CLI process and that is going to build the output and we can go back to the page and you can see we now have this default dropdown from Django Shad CN. And this looks good out of the box, but if you do want to customize this, you can just go to the individual components themselves and you can change the styling as you wish. And you can also see here at the top level index.html, we define an Alpine JS component using the X data attribute. And that contains some state, for example, whether the dropdown is open or not, and also some functions for actually modifying state and responding to events. So you can also extend this kind of stuff with your own logic if needed. Now, what I mentioned that we want to do is we want to actually use our own data from a Django view. So we're going to do that just now. Let's go back to the application and we're going to open a views.py file that we have in this project. So there is only a single view in this Django starter code that I had. And it's this index view here and it's rendering an index.html template. So everything we've built here has been in this index.html template. That's where we have the buttons and that's where we now have the select component. So what we're going to do now is add some data. So I'm going to paste some code in here and it's going to be a list of Python web frameworks. So we have Django, Flask, FastAPI, Tornado and Lightstar. And then we're going to create a context key here called frameworks. 
and we're going to map that to the frameworks list that we created above. So inside index.html we now have a context variable called templates and we're going to iterate over each one of these frameworks and we're going to display a selection, one of these options here, for each framework. So let's go back to index.html and what we can do is we can change this code for the select component. Now the first thing to do is change the placeholder. So instead of theme, we're going to add choose a framework. If we save that and go back to the application, we're going to see that we have that by default. Now the options are what we want to change next. We want to refer to each framework that we're getting back from the back end. So each one of these is a Python dictionary that contains two keys, an ID and a name. So let's go back here and what we can do is we can go to the select content and inside that we're rendering a select item for these three hard-coded themes. So what I'm going to do instead is remove two of these and we're going to create a Django template for loop and we're going to iterate over each framework in the frameworks that we have in the context. And don't forget to end the for loop in Django's templates with end for. And then what we can do instead of hard coding light is we can actually pass in the data that we have for each framework that we're iterating over. So for the value, let's say we want to add framework.id and the actual text that's rendered inside the select box, we can use framework.name. So for each framework, we're referring to the keys that we have in the dictionary for that framework. So if we now save this and go back to the application, when we click the drop down, we get the frameworks displayed inside that selection. So it's very easy to take data that's coming back from your Django view, and that can also be data that you've fetched from a database, and then use that data inside your templates with these Shad CN Django components to actually render out relevant data instead of just hard coding things. And remember as well, we can also add our own custom styles. So if we go to, for example, index.html, and in fact, I'm gonna to go to item.html for the select component. So this is for an individual item, which would be one option inside the select box. What we can do is change the classes, for example, for those items. So I'm gonna add a class randomly here of background green 500 to each item. When we save that and go back to the page, you can see that when we click the drop down, we now have these green backgrounds. When we hover over things, it changes the background color. And that's because somewhere else in this component, we have hover styles that are being applied and overriding the background color. And we can add anything we want inside these classes. So for example, animate spin, we can add that. And if we go back to this page here and refresh the page, this time you can see that when we click the drop down, we have this animation. Each item is being animated, it's spinning round continuously. And I'm sure you'll agree this is not the optimal user experience. It's terrible. You probably don't want this, but it just highlights that you can actually do anything you want with these Shad CN components that you generate. You own these components. Once you've generated the files that are required, you can then customize them however you want to fit the needs of your website. So to enhance the user experience, I'm going to remove Animate Spin from these classes. And we can also remove the background color as well. And that's going to be just about all for this video. This has been an introduction to Shad CN Django and we've seen how easy it is to generate these base components and then customize them to fit the needs of your website. We've seen some basic examples here with buttons and selections, but there are lots of different components available. For example, accordions, commands, where you type into the component and you get some search results, as you can see here. Lots of different components that are available. And if you're using Django Cotton already in your projects, it could be nice to drop this in to get some good basic components off the ground that you can then customize and develop as you adapt your project. And this is all integrated with Alpine.js, so if you're familiar with that package, you can very easily extend the functionality and logic that's defined here in order to fit your needs. Now, if you're interested in more content about this, let me know in the comments. It's also easy to integrate this with HTMX. If you'd like to see that, let me know as well. It's been quite a while since we did an HTMX video. But other than that, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link just below the video. And thanks again to everyone that's contributed to that. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And if you want to vote in this poll, it is now available on the Bug Bites channel. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.